Hello everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and this is step four in our six step process to design a speaker. Um, this is crossovers. This is a big one. Crossovers. For me, when I first started designing speakers, crossovers was the most intimidating part of the process. Um, I was certain there was some magic going on behind the curtain that I just didn't have access to. Now that's kind of true, just not in the way that I thought. Now before we dive in, I just want to make sure you guys know I made a worksheet for this step. Uh, you can get it over at kmakits.com or click right up here. Um, yeah, it goes over everything we're going to talk about today. You can also go back and get step one through three on the blog. Again, kmakits.com. So there's really two ways to design a crossover. Um, the first and really old school way is to build your speaker, sit in front of it, listen to some music, and start adding and subtracting components until you like the way it sounds. Um, it's a real uh, long process and you kind of have to have experience to know what components will do what to the sound. Um, luckily, there's another way. So now we have software that can simulate the different crossover components, different values, different component combinations. Um, so you don't have to do everything that we just talked about in the old school way. Uh, you don't have to build your speaker first. You can just do it all in software. Pretty nice. So there is a little bit of magic going on. It's just all in software. <laughs> now with that being said, I don't want to underestimate the importance of having spare and different values of crossover components on hand. Because once you've designed your speaker, uh, designed the crossover, built the speaker, built the crossover, you're going to listen to it and make tweaks after. And all speakers normally need a little bit of tweaking uh, once you have it all built and put together. So having a stash or a little bucket full of spare components Super nice to have. I believe the only real test for great sounding speakers uh, are speakers that sound good to you live, like in a room. Um, and you can only really make those live tweaks with actual components in hand. You can find all the crossover components you'll ever need over at partsexpress.com. Now Parts Express is not the only place online to get crossover and speaker building components. There's plenty of other places and they're totally great too. Um, I just have been using Parts Express for years. Uh, they're really nice people and I have no problem recommending what I actually use. Um, also, they're a great friend of the channel. They help make these videos, so they're good people. Check it out. All right, just a little side note before we continue. I'm gonna do my best to explain crossovers in a way that someone who has zero experience with speaker buildings, never heard of a crossover before, has no experience in electrical engineering, can actually understand. Um, I might be using the wrong terms at times, I'm gonna be leaving details out, because that's not what this video is about. My goal here is to spark that aha moment in a new person's head. Um, I'm not trying to teach you detail specifics of crossover design. Um, if you want more information, I really hope you do, I'm going to link uh, really great crossover articles down in the description. Please go check those out, read all the big words and maths you want there. All right, now with that being said, uh, let's talk crossovers. Your music source, so your phone, your record player, whatever, puts out a signal that is full spectrum. So it has the full audio spectrum from the really lows down at 20 hertz all the way up to the really highs up at 20,000 hertz. So a point source audio system, point source speaker, takes that full uh, spectrum of sound and plays it through one driver. Um, so everything from the lows down the real rumbly bass all the way up to the highs, high cymbals, gets played through one speaker. Well, physics makes it so one speaker has a really hard time doing all that at the same time. And in the real world, there's not very many drivers that can actually handle that. So to make for better sound, people much smarter than I <laughs> design drivers that are individually suited to reproduce sound music uh, within a certain range of that full high to low frequency spectrum. We call the drivers that handle the high portion of that frequency spectrum tweeters and the low portion of the frequency spectrum woofers. So how do we make sure the tweeters only get the high portion and the woofers only get the low portion? Well, with a crossover. Yay! A crossover uses a combination of capacitors and inductors to split that full audio spectrum and make sure the correct drivers get the correct portion of that spectrum. All right, let's talk about the components that make up a passive crossover. All the components we're about to talk about impede the flow of electrons. We call this impedance. Um, 
Specifically, how they go about impeding the flow uh, is what makes them different. Resistors. Resistors lower the amplitude or volume equally across the frequency spectrum. So if your tweeter is too loud, uh, you put a resistor on it to lower its overall volume. Capacitors. Capacitors or caps have the ability to lower the amplitude or volume of a frequency spectrum in relation to a given frequency point. So in the example of a high pass filter, any frequency above a given point passes through the capacitor as if it wasn't there. But the volume of the frequencies below that given point begin to decrease as the frequencies get lower. As you get further away from that point, you get to a frequency level where the volume is so low you can't hear it anymore. Capacitor's impedance increases as frequency decreases. Inductors. Inductors or chokes or coils are essentially the inverse of a capacitor. Inductors used in low pass filters let any frequency below a given point pass through it as if it wasn't there and begins to lower the volume of the frequencies above that given point. Inductors impedance increases as frequencies increase. Okay, so now let's talk about orders. The way we use these components in conjunction with each other determines a crossover's order. The higher the crossover order, the steeper the cutoff slope of the unwanted frequencies. So let's take our inductor we just talked about. To use it in a low pass filter, we would place it in series with the driver, which means we would connect one end of the inductor to the positive lead of our audio amp and the other end of the inductor to the positive lead of our driver. The negative lead of the driver would be connected straight to the negative lead of the audio amp. This would be a first order low pass crossover, which means we only use one filter, the inductor, to lower the volume of the frequencies after a given point on the audio frequency spectrum. But the volume of those high frequencies don't just suddenly go to zero right after your crossover point. It's a gradual taper or a slope until at some point the volume becomes zero. So if you set your crossover point at 500 hertz, you're still gonna hear some volume, some sound at 600 hertz. And you'll hear a little less at 700 hertz and a little less at 800. A first order crossover has a 60 dB per octave slope. So for every octave past the crossover point, uh, the volume of that octave will be 60 dB less than the octave before it. A second order crossover has a 12 dB per octave slope and a third order crossover has an 18 dB per octave slope. The higher your crossover order, the faster you can get rid of those unwanted frequencies going to a driver. Um, but the higher the crossover order, the more complex your crossover is going to be, the more components you need in your crossover, the more expensive it's going to be, and the more components there are gonna be in your audio signal path all not great things. There are lots of things you can or are able to consider when choosing a order for your crossover. Um, what I just mentioned are definitely not everything. I don't have the depth of knowledge nor do I have the time to go over all the advantages and disadvantages of the different crossover orders. Um, but just like everything else in speaker building, you can get as deep and as technical as you want. Again, there's uh, articles down in the description. I usually start out with a second order crossover. If I can, I'll go back to a first order, but if that's not giving me what I need, then I'll go up to a third order. I very rarely go above a third order crossover. All right, let's talk about crossover layout. We already talked about how to put together a first order crossover. Um, it's simply a capacitor in series with the driver to get a high pass filter and an inductor in series with a driver to get a low pass filter. A second order uses the same base as a first order, but just adds a second component, the opposite component from the first, in parallel with the driver after the first component. So a second order high pass filter looks like this. A third order uses the same base as the second order, but adds a third component to the filter, the same as the first component, in series with the driver after the second component. So a third order high pass filter looks like this. As you can tell, we didn't go into the specifics of component values, uh, and that's because component values for a crossover depends entirely on your goals for that crossover, and that's when software comes in. So in the next video, crossover part two, um, we're gonna dive into the free software I use to play around with crossover designs.
If you enjoyed this video or any of my videos, please hit that like button. Uh, if you're new here and you wanna see more, please subscribe and hit that bell if you wanna keep updated on when I come out with videos. We still got a few more steps in this design process, by the way, so you don't wanna miss those videos. If you're interested in building your own speakers, um, head over to kmakekits.com. Uh, there's free build plans there, there's build kits, everything you need. I have a Patreon where awesome fans like you help me make these videos. Uh, and if you want to see the behind the scenes of me making these videos and building my speakers, head over to Instagram and follow me there. Uh, Kirby Meets Audio. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll be back next week uh, to do software. And maybe I'll have a cast. Hopefully I'll have a cast because this thing is annoying. I broke my finger doing jujitsu, by the way, in case you were wondering. It happens. All right. See you guys next week.